Is this the most beautiful postage stamp that the United States has ever issued? Now, yes, I know, beauty is a subjective quality. It's in the eye of the beholder. All stamps are beautiful. There's no such thing as an ugly stamp. No, there are definitely some ugly stamps out there. I'll leave that argument to the comment section for you to go and hash out because this stamp has been regarded as one of the most beautiful stamps when it comes to the long history of US postal issues. In fact, when I googled most beautiful US stamp, the first several hits were all about this particular one. Collectors have claimed that it is one of the top, if not the most beautiful postage stamp that the US has issued, while of course there are collectors that argue against this and say that this postage stamp is not at all worth the esteemed title that it is getting. What is for sure though is that this is a superb stamp to learn about, one with a story that connects it to American history and may influence your opinion. So let's explore it together. It's known as Western Cattle in Storm, a $1 commemorative that is part of a set of nine stamps issued for the Trans-Mississippi International Exhibition in 1898. This was a World's Fair in Omaha. World's Fairs were popular, massive events that showcased the achievements of nations and they typically varied in theme and character. Well, thanks to the Chicago World's Fair just a few years earlier, Commemorative stamps were now a thing in the US. A special set for the Chicago World's Fair was issued to mark the 400th anniversary of the Columbus Expedition to the New World, which matched the theme of the event. These stamps have beautiful engravings with magnificent detail illustrating the story of Columbus's voyage. And although a full set was extremely expensive to purchase at face value, over $16 in 1893, which is equivalent to over $500 today, they were popular stamps. Collectors loved them and they were highly sought after. So this new set that includes our Western Cattle and Storm stamp was issued for the Trans-Mississippi Exposition in 1898. This time celebrating the West through nine engraved images that were adapted from various photographs, drawings and paintings. This includes an epic scene of a buffalo being hunted by a Native American on horseback, John C. Fremont on the Rocky Mountains, the hardships of emigration, and of course, our western cattle in a storm with a black bull up front. The frames were all the same except for the postage value and they were all in a single color. This part is really interesting because they were all designed to be bicolor stamps. With the vignette in black, all of the frames were to be in different colors. Apparently, our stormy cattle stamp was to have a red frame, but due to the Spanish-American War that had just broken out, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing had an unexpected demand for printing war-related materials, including revenue stamps to help fund the war. So they simplified the process for printing these new stamps. They just didn't have the time and resources to give full attention to them. So they were each printed in just one color, cutting the time and process in half. Our Western Cattle in a Storm stamp was printed in black, an all black $1 stamp that is said to have actually enhanced the beauty of the stamp. The dramatic storm scene with galloping bull and herd in the background, it creates intrigue through depth and ultimately making it stand out from all the others. It's nothing short of an epic visualization of the rugged American West. Uh, well, there's one small problem with that. This scene is not from an image portraying Western cattle or any cattle either side of the Mississippi in the US. This was taken from a painting by John McWhirter titled The Vanguard and painted in 1879. It had been etched and reproduced in a variety of ways and was ultimately used without permission by the US Post Office Department. The painter was from Scotland and he painted this in Scotland. Apparently it was painted in his home near the highland town of Callender, a scene of a Scottish herd in a snowstorm. And I don't know, I'm no cattle expert, but that totally looks like Scottish highland cattle with all that hair. Once this was discovered, a full apology was issued to the painter via the offices of the British ambassador, which apparently was enough to satisfy everyone. Almost 57,000 of these stamps were issued, and while sales were initially high, not all of them were sold. The post office department recalled the remaining unsold stamps, a number that is unknown today, and destroyed them all. 
So we don't know exactly how many of these are out there. They are highly prized by collectors and are available on the market in various conditions, both used and unused, but can cost a pretty penny. Good luck finding one of these on a cover for an affordable price. Ah, but there is an opportunity to own this rugged western scene without breaking the bank. In 1998, the US Postal Service reissued these stamps for the 100th anniversary of the originals and the Trans-Mississippi Expo. And they did so in mini sheets featuring the stamps in their intended bicolor form. And what's really great, since they were high value stamps in their day, they were issued with the same face value from 100 years prior. So you can own this $1 Western Cattle and Storm stamp and even use it on outgoing mail. Technically, you can even use this one on outgoing mail, the original, because on an envelope, they are equals. But in the collector's market, they are drastically different. Now, back to the question. Is this the most beautiful postage stamp that the United States has ever issued? The US has issued iconic stamps throughout its history, some that have had an important connection to the country and others that have had major popularity, several of which could be argued as a contender for the most beautiful postage stamp. In fact, a famous and influential philatelist, John Luff, wasn't a fan of this set of stamps. In 1902, he wrote in his book, The Postage Stamps of the US, that collectors, dealers, and societies all were against these stamps from being issued and ultimately were not pleased by what they got overloaded with ornaments, heavy in color, and blurred in printing. But a very different opinion was shared almost a generation later by the Stampman radio broadcaster and philatelic author Ralph Kimball, in which he described the Trans-Mississippi issue in his book about U.S. commemoratives as perhaps the most attractive set of commemoratives which we have ever had. He then went on to say some additional flattering things about the $1 Western Cattle stamp. The following year, in 1934, Stamps magazine asked its readers to go to a vote to decide on the most beautiful stamp in the world. And the $1 Trans-Mississippi stamp came in second place, the highest ranked US stamp, only second to the Canadian Blue Nose stamp, considered to be only the most beautiful stamp in the world. You see, maybe it's just me, but don't you think that the Canadian Blue Nose gets just a little too much attention for being considered as the most beautiful postage stamp in the world? I don't know, maybe, maybe we can talk about it at some point. Interesting to see the other rankings from that 1934 stamps magazine. Notice the several Colombian exposition stamps that made the list. There were only a total of 600 ballots cast and 15 winners recognized, of which 9 are from the US and 3 are Canadian. It pretty much needs to be called out that this contest was held via a US magazine, and of course the publication acknowledged this. But this magazine is continually referenced online when discussing the Western Cattle's beauty as well as the Blue Nose. And as we can see by the total votes, both of these stamps ran away from the rest of the competition. Since then, it seems that the stamp is continually brought up as a top beauty, if not the most beautiful US stamp that has ever been issued. From a personal opinion, yes. I am both intrigued and enamored by the beauty, emotion, and the rugged elegance that this stamp radiates. It's eye-catching, and it is certainly at the top of US stamps for me when it comes to beauty. But the bigger question, the question that matters the most, is what do you think? Do you think this postage stamp deserves such an esteemed and prestigious title? And if not, what belongs in its place? Let us all know in the comments. More videos are to come as we continue exploring the world of philately. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.